the name of my new book is Forgiveness, an Alternative Account. It's published by Yale University Press. And I wrote it because I have felt conflicted about the way forgiveness is practiced and thought about in Christian life. And, um, but it's also something I wanted to hold on to. I mean, forgiveness is central to the gospel, central to Jesus's message. And so I wanted to think about ways that forgiveness could be useful and meaningful and important in Christian life. I remember as a child, like I was, I was watching like a movie version of Jesus's life, Jesus of Nazareth, this BBC production that, they, that showed on TV. And I remember the moment from the cross when Jesus says, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. And I just like got emotional as a, as a, you know, an eight year old or a nine year old. Um, and then in scenes of public life, you know, peace activists and so forth, and people like Martin Luther King who spoke, or Desmond Tutu who spoke with eloquence and power about forgiveness. I've always found that really moving. And so forgiveness has always inspired me. I think the reason I decided I wanted to write a book about it is because that inspiration was being confronted by challenging critiques from folks who were saying, you know, what about victims? Why does the moral responsibility for repairing wrongdoing fall upon victims, the people who are all, have already been harmed? And especially in the philosophical literature, but also among activists, there was started to be some kind of criticism or questioning of the value of forgiveness. Um, and I took those criticisms seriously and I really wanted to engage them. One of the things that I think about in the book is that, that when we talk about forgiveness in, in Western culture and Christian culture, usually one of the things that we imply by it is also emotional. One of the things we imply by it is emotional, right? So that when I say I forgive you, one of the things I'm saying is that I'm not angry anymore or my anger has gone away. And I think processing anger in a healthy way is absolutely a mental health issue. Um, but I'm not sure that's what's at stake in forgiveness. I think forgiveness can still be angry, right? I think if one has anger that, that roils and, and causes damage to one's mental health, then that is a psychological or therapeutic issue that should be addressed. For me, forgiveness is less about managing one's emotions. That's not to say it's not important to manage one's emotions, it is. Forgiveness is about what you do with your emotions. Like when I am angry, how do I treat the person with whom I'm angry, right? Like if I treat them with love and respect and peacefulness, I can still be angry and still practice forgiveness. I can do both those things. One of the concerns I have about the way forgiveness is often practiced is that because it's often so closely aligned with the abatement of anger, is what we end up doing is telling victims, you're not allowed to be angry anymore, right? Like, forgive me, and by the way, if you forgive me, then you can't be angry anymore. And what that does is silence people. And so a lot of people who, who deserve to be angry, who have righteous anger, who are willing to forgive, but also want to say like, I also, I forgive you, but I demand someone, I, I demand an accounting, I demand someone take responsibility for what's been done. I think that, that they should still be allowed to be angry. And, and also this is also, I mean, it's not just like in terms of those justice issues, it's also in a pastoral or even a mental health context. I mean, someone who's suffered grave harm and has experienced trauma because of a grave harm and then is not angry, has processed that experience and is no longer angry, just the way trauma works, that person might not be angry for 10 years and then wake up one morning and be angry again. Right? And that's okay, because that's how our hearts and our minds and our souls work. I don't want to tell that person after 10 years, oh, this morning your forgiveness failed. Right? What I want to say is like, you're angry and that's normal and that's natural. What's important, at least from a Christian moral perspective, is not what you feel, but what you do to others. Like, do you love others? Like, that's the question. And I think anger can be loving. It's emotions don't have moral character. It's what our emotions, the actions our emotions inspire that have moral consequences, and those are the things that we should be thinking about. So, so one of the things I want to try to define in the book is forgiveness as, again, not the abatement of anger. It's also not the same thing as reconciliation. I think the other thing that we often imply when we say, I forgive you, is that, you know, therefore, let's be reconciled. And I'm not sure everybody needs to reconcile with us or deserves to be reconciled with us, especially if they're still threatening harm, right? Reconciliation demands some warrant, like they have to earn it. Forgiveness, I think, for me, the way I define it is, is more a, a commitment to love your enemy, right? Not to respond to harm with harm. That doesn't mean you make yourself vulnerable to them by reconciling. It doesn't mean you're not angry at them. It just means I'm gonna, I'm gonna do better to you than you did to me. And I'm not gonna harm you in response to the harm you caused me. Which to me, again, is very consistent with what I see as the ethic of Jesus and the teachings of the Sermon on the Mount. Um, and that's what I hope people will take away from the book is that they will see more actions in their own lives and in the lives of others 
as living up to the commands of the gospel.